Hey everyone, Mark here. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, so today in the garage, we're gonna take a look at the Wizard Fusion chassis. I've been wanting to pick up a Fusion chassis for a while and, and test it out and see how it compares against some of my Viper chassis. Um, so I went ahead and I, I picked one up. If you, um, if you go out to Wizard's site, um, you'll see that they sell the Fusion a couple of different versions. They have a Spec Racer version. They have one with brass weights, and then they have one called the Super Stock version. But they all range in price from like $110 to $120 um, with the stock armature and depending on the gearing you get and depending on which electrical system you get um, de determines that price range. So they all come with an independent front end, a wizard independent front end. Um, this car has the end bell system they also make what they call the hood system which is from what i understand it's it's a little a little tricky to get configured it's a little temperamental and it also costs more money so this car has the end bell system and this car has you can get it either with wizard gears or with uh rpm and jag combo which is what this car has this has an rpm's purple gear and a Jag pinion gear. It's a 723 gearing per uh, spec racer for uh, Hopper rules. Um, now, I did not get this car from Wizard, actually. I had this car made for me by Rooster Racing. Uh, Stephen Crossland from Rooster built this car for me. I've been chatting with Stephen for a little while now. I, I hooked up with him through his Rooster Racing Facebook page. Um... He builds high-performance uh, Viper and Fusion chassis. He's been building chassis for a number of years now. He's very knowledgeable. Um, he's worked with Terry Flynn from HC Slots, testing stuff for Terry. And he's just a very knowledgeable guy. He's answered all my questions. Um, you know, whenever I had any questions on some things, you know, Stephen always took the time to answer me. Uh, he called me, we spoke on the phone a couple of times. So, um, really great guy. I, I suggest you check out Rooster Racing, check out his Facebook page and, you know, see what he's got to offer out there. And if you have any questions, um, you can hook, hook up with him through his Facebook page. Um, so he did build this chassis for me. Um, this has a couple of things that are different than if you got it from Wizard. So I'll go over the specs as, as this chassis is right here. It does have a hot stock 5.8 ohm armature that's called the Joker. This is actually a custom armature. Um, it has the purple and greenish stacks there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Very smooth running. The gear mesh feels real smooth. The movement of the commutator over the brushes feels real smooth um, this has an independent front end from quicker engineering running 322 front tires and quicker engineering rear hubs 250 hubs with 0.418 tires um, from what i understand quicker engineering's material is actually lighter and stronger than like a standard black hub from, from Viper. Um, I don't know too much about quicker engineering. Uh, I'm going to check them out. Also, these tires are from, I think it was a company called Onslaught. I'm not familiar with them either, but they are pretty stiff, firm tires. They seem like decent tires. And these are a 0.418 tire. So I thought what I would do is compare um, this Spec Racer Class Fusion to a Spec Racer Class Viper and also uh, a bone stock Viper V-Spec just to kind of as a comparison. But I did want to point out a couple of things about the Fusion chassis uh, for one it's shorter, it's a pretty short chassis compared to the Viper. 
it's interesting how they have the pickup shoe is like parallel to the front axle and then it comes behind pretty long shoe behind the axle whereas on the viper the shoe is in the center of the of the axle is in the center of the pickup shoe so i couldn't tell you either way if one is better than the other it's just an observation i made um another thing to notice is the size of the mag traction magnets on the fusion they're pretty big magnets compared to a uh, a stock Viper magnet, it's both wider and longer. Though this car is running the newer Maxi Traction magnets, so I think that kinda makes up a little bit for the size of the magnet. We're starting to approach the same width as the Fusion on this flared out back end on these Maxi Traction. And these are all running, you know, Pro 4 or C4. This is called the C4 class magnets, and these are Pro 4 on the Viper. Um, another interesting thing on the Fusion is how the rear axle is placed. Um, if you look, you can see that the slot is kind of on an angle compared to on a Viper where it's straight, straight up and down on the Viper. You guys can see that. And this kind of goes up on an angle. So this kind of helps bring the chassis down even more to let you run with some really low profile tires. So I thought what we would do, we'll check the downforce of these cars as they are here, and we'll put them on the dyno and we'll, uh, we'll get some numbers on the dyno. And then we'll, um, We'll run them on the track and we'll get some, some lap times. Sorry, trying to get this pin back in. Okay, let's look at the downforce. We'll start with a stock, stock Viper. This is a, as you would get it from Viper. Sitting at like a 112, somewhere around there. Yep, 112. Um, the upgraded max traction magnets. Sitting at... Interesting. This was definitely sitting at, this was definitely running at like a 140 something before, but now we're pulling a 138. Um, let's see how the wizard car, so we're at a 142, 143. So pretty close on the downforce for these two cars. Uh, a little bit stronger magnets on the, on the wizard. Um, then I thought we would go ahead and we'll run the dyno. It's running at 18.6 volts, which is what I um, run my track at. So we'll take a look at the stock Viper first. I'm not sure I'm in the right slot there. So we're sitting at like a three, three seven, three zero seven, around a three for the stock Viper. Let's see what the hot stock 5.8 ohm Viper does. Wow, we're at a four three. That's running pretty strong. Four three six. We'll call it a four three. Let's see what the fusion does. Fusion's also up over a four. Uh, 
running right around the four. This car is a fresh build. This, this car is definitely broken in more than this car. Although this was run at five volts for, I think it was three hours before it was shipped to me. So, um, yeah, pretty high numbers for my hot stock armature Viper. I was surprised about that. I, when I ran this car yesterday, it wasn't running as strong, but I did clean it and oil it today. I also gave the Fusion a, a little bit of oil as well. Um, this was running in the 4.2 yesterday, so a little, little bit lower score today, but very, very similar scores. Um, I think what we should talk about more importantly is the cost of these chassis. Um, you got the low end. This is a $45 car. This car with the max traction magnets are $10. This armature is another $15 or $16. The independent front end and tires is probably another $10. You're probably looking at like a $75, $80 car here. This car, as it's configured, you know, like I said, it's like $115 from Wizard um, with, with this armature and the front end and rear end and gears in this car. Um, it's probably closer to $150 chassis. So it, it is almost twice the cost. So I understand that's going to uh, prohibit some people from considering uh, buying a Fusion when it, you know, the cost is up there. But I think these cars are really m more built for the more serious racer, somebody who races in leagues and clubs and uh, per hopper rules and things like that, that are looking to get every little bit of uh, performance that they can, uh, every little gain that they can. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to pause the camera here and we will set up at the track and, and do some laps and see how the cars run. Okay, we are back at the track. I'm going to run all the cars with this hot pink Lexan body. Um, just for you, Mayor, the mayor from Gale Force Raceway. We got some hot pink going on. So there you go, Mayor, that's just for you. I'm gonna use the same body on all the chassis. So I'll take it off and put it on. I'll start with the stock V-Spec, then I'll do my upgraded Viper, and then last we'll run the Fusion and we'll see what kind of times we get. I will try not to crash too much. Go. Stock Viper, and now we'll 
We'll see how we can do on the diffusion. Trying to put this on without my glasses is a challenge. Alright, let's see how the, the fusion runs. Five, 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 five is the best time. Two seven. Oh, two six. Two five, five. consistently in the two fives and we did actually get down into a, a two four eight even though I did crash uh, coming through the, the uh, bridge there so yeah I mean it, it, it definitely performed the best of all three but really not by a wide margin over my hot stock Viper I got down into the two fives with that car uh, the Fusion was a little more consistently in the two fives and did get down to a two four. So um, I don't know, but at twice the cost, can you can you justify paying that much for that little bit of an improvement? Again, if you're a racer and you're racing competitively, that that may um, that may give you the advantage you need. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Hit me up in the comment section, and we'll talk with you guys soon.